The Mama Take Heart podcast with Rabrina Rettel is brought to you by Life Audio and is a part of our Faith Toolkit series. For more inspirational, faith-affirming podcasts, visit lifeaudio.com. Welcome back to Mama Take Heart, understanding your Gen Z girl. I'm your host, Rabrina Rettel, and I'm here to help you be the gospel-centered, compassionate, and influential voice in your girl's life. But today, Mama, I'm checking in on you. How are you? I mean, really, in our current health crisis of a global pandemic, when we go to the doctor's office now, the first thing they do is take our temperature. And we know that a high temperature, among other symptoms, is an indicator that something's not right in our body, that our immune system has been compromised in some way, which leads us to be diagnosed with something, even if it's only a cold, we know that we're not feeling well. Well, today I'm taking your temperature to find out how you're doing physically, emotionally, and spiritually. You know, the old saying, when mama's not happy, no one's happy. That's because in our homes, more often than not, we set the temperature. If we're stressed or upset about something, everyone in our space is going to know and feel it. If we're not wanting to answer one more question or do one more thing, we can become icy. And the temperature in our homes will reflect that. So everyone around us will feel that cold. But now when we're feeling good and wanting to engage with others, our homes been become warm and cozy, and those around us will feel the warmth. Now, this isn't to say that you can't have a bad day. Life happens, and sometimes we just need to take a break and take a breath. It doesn't mean you don't love your children, and it doesn't mean that you're a bad mom. I want to encourage you in this and knowing that everyone has a bad day, and sometimes even a bad week, and I've been there. So I was thinking about a few suggestions and things that maybe. I could use to help you acknowledge and name the feelings to be able to move forward. And when you're feeling down, if you've been feeling that way for quite some time and you just can't move out of it, you may need to seek professional help and that's okay. When we think about our physical self-care, the first thing we usually think about is running, walking, a boot camp class or something like that. Although physical activity is good, You know, it's good for stress reducing. Primarily, though, breathing, deep breathing is very good physically for stress reducing. It is a diaphragmatic breathing or abdominal breathing. It is a very good way to relax. It relaxes your muscles. It lowers your blood pressure. It slows racing thoughts. Deep, slow inhaling and exhaling can also be done in form of a prayer, something called breath prayers. I'll use Psalm 56.3 as an example. So when you inhale, you can inhale, when I'm afraid, and then exhale, I put my trust in you. Doing this exercise a few times will help you meditate on God's word and allows your body to begin to relax because of the breathing. Breath prayers are a good thing that we can also teach our children. So if they become stressed or upset, that deep breathing techniques can help calm them. This is a type of breathing you can also do to move into being mindful. And mindfulness is being present in every moment using your five senses, such as sight, smell, taste, hear, and touch. So what I like to do is close my eyes and see my favorite place or a place that brings me calm. And since I'm in the snow and cold of Nebraska right now, I like to think of a beach. I smell the ocean air. I taste the salt of it. I hear the waves as they ebb and flow. And I feel the sand between my toes. The Abide Bible app is a good form for meditation. You can listen to a message. You can have a a Bible verse read to you with soothing sounds like an ocean, trees, water, birds. And it's also beneficial to practice a deep breathing 
while you're experiencing those five senses. Another way we can take care of ourselves is to limit TV and social media intake. News particularly is what we really wanna limit. Constant images of hardships and hurts, mockery, arguments, those types of things can take a toll on your mental state. So taking a small break away, even for a day, can help restore you. Another thing that helps is writing down your emotions in a journal. It can be very cathartic. And I shouldn't say this, but since I'm a writer, but at times I have a hard time journaling. And I understand people who have a hard time writing down their feelings. But what I've found over the years is that journaling helps me sift through my emotions. For instance, during my husband's deployment in 2010, as any military spouse can attest, crazy things happen. And during that time, I experienced a series of stressful events. The first thing that happened is while I was at work, the sitter called to tell me my son's chicken nuggets were on fire. There was a fire in my oven. She was a quick thinker, thank goodness. So she was able to get the fire out while it was still in the oven and before any damage occurred. I was so flustered at work. I told my boss what happened and thankfully, she godly let me go check on everyone. At the time, my kids were seven and nine and praise God that everyone was okay and it didn't seem to traumatize them much. The sitter even told me that my son asked if it meant that his chicken nuggets were ready. Well, a good neighbor of ours, you know, he checked out our oven to determine the problem and he gladly fixed it at no charge for the part or labor. It was such a blessing. Well, after that incident, I was hit from behind twice. I had two car accidents within three months of each other, one accident per child. So at one time, one child was in the car when I had an accident and another time the other child was in the car when I had an accident. The last one was pretty bad and our car was barely salvageable. At this point, my emotions started to get the best of me, and I began to feel anxious and nervous all the time. I couldn't sleep, so I was always tired. I started to feel tingling in my arms and my hands, along with neck and back pain. I told uh, my symptoms to my chiropractor as I had started setting up weekly appointments. And what he told me was that my adrenal glands were out of whack due to the constant stress. Our adrenal glands produce a hormone called cortisol and cortisol helps regulate metabolism, immune system, and our responses to stress like fight or flight. But when we're feeling constant stress, it can work overtime. I was producing too much cortisol, which led to anxiety, nervousness, and irritability. He suggested a change in diet and a natural supplement. I also chose to seek professional help with a counselor through Military One Source. After my first visit with my counselor, she told me to write every day for as long as I could. And every night after I put the kids to bed, I'd write in a journal, sometimes for 10 minutes, sometimes for 30 minutes, and sometimes longer. And there were times that I would cry while I was writing, but slowly I began to feel better, getting all my emotions, my fears, angers, Anxious thoughts on paper was a stress reliever. And although I saw the counselor for just a short time, the journaling was the best advice she had given me. Well, one thing she also said was that I had a great voice and that I should do voice work. So there you go. Well, I also mentioned that while I was writing in my journal that I would cry. And you know what? It's okay. Sometimes you have to have a good cry. God's people cry out to him in Exodus and Psalms the book of Lamentations, and those are just a few books that tells of, of how God's beloveds cry out to him. And of course, we know Jesus cried out while he was being crucified. Humans cry for a number of reasons, and sometimes it's seen something beautiful, like a sunrise or a sunset, snow-capped mount mountains, or taking in God's creation around us. Sometimes it's pain we're experiencing, whether it's physical or emotional, or it could just be a heart-tugging video. Either way, crying is a signal that your body is trying to release some sort of emotion. Naming the emotions, when you're feeling overwhelmed, frustrated, sad, confused, anxious, or angry, helps your brain process and unleash those emotions. 
So I'd have to say another way to take care of yourself is to give yourself grace. This is something I had to learn for myself and I'm still working on it, but to be gentle with yourself. Galatians 5, 22 through 25 tells us, but the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things, there is no law. I truly believe that God wants us to be gentle with ourselves are we as we are with others. And before we can be gentle with others, we need to be gentle with ourselves. In Christ, there is no condemnation. The Holy Spirit brings conviction, which leads to repentance, as in turning away from sin, but not condemnation. Condemnation is not of God, is not of Christ. Our enemy, the devil, wants to, us to beat ourselves up because he's an accuser. But in order for us to be gentle with ourselves and others, we have to know that he's gentle with us. Colossians 3.12 tells us, Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Give those things to yourself as you would to someone else. Show the same grace for yourself as you would for a good friend. When we're trying to take care of ourselves, making time for our passions or our interests, that is also important. Even if it's just a little time, reading, writing, painting, whatever it is, spend 15 to 20 minutes, even if it's just once a week, that will be helpful. And then also rest and pray. Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 through 30 tells us that Jesus said, come to me all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And also 1 Peter 5, 7 tells us to cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. God cares for us. Why wouldn't we care for ourselves? When you take care of yourself, you're a better human, wife, mother, and friend. I know it's difficult to see that when you take care of yourself, you're, but you're setting an example for your children also. It's teaching them to do the same for themselves. Well, I hope that you found today's message helpful and encouraging. I've listed some of the resources to help you take care of yourself in the show notes. Thank you for listening today. And remember, God is for you and you are not alone. With his spirit, you are filled with courage and strength of purpose. So don't fret, Mama. Instead, take heart. Mama Take Heart is a production of Life Audio and the Salem Web Network. If you liked what you just listened to, would you take a second and leave us a rating in your favorite podcast app? It really does help more people like you find our show. This podcast is produced by me, Kelly Givens, and Stephen Sanders, with executive oversight by Stephen McGarvey. You can find more podcasts like this over at lifeaudio.com.